Hi, I'm Mike, Poketips Mike, and welcome back to episode number 8 of my Pokemon Heart Gold Extreme Randomizer Nuzlocke. Whew, last episode was crazy. We got lucky enough to encounter a legendary Pokemon, Latios, and I tried to catch it, but I used up my whole entire inventory of Pokeballs, and that thing broke out of every single one. However, we were able to redeem ourselves by doing some big brain plays against Whitney, and we got our third gym badge, but more important than all all of that stuff, Zuko finally learned a fire type move. So now we can finally use our fire chicken and actually have it use some fire moves. That's pretty awesome. Now today we're finally going to be leaving Goldenrod City. We've been here for a little while. There was so much stuff to do here, but we basically covered it all at this point, except there's one more thing I want to do over here before we actually leave. Let's talk to this lady over here in the flower shop. Apparently, there is an odd tree on Route 36. They say it dances when you water it. Oh, that's a plane badge from Goldenrod Gym. Did you defeat Whitney? Well, then there's nothing to worry about, is there? I'll let you use this squirt bottle for a while then. Oh, never mind. Keep it. And boom, there we go. We get the squirt bottle. That'll allow us to actually get past that dancing pseudo wudo tree and finally be able to explore the rest of the Johto region. So let's leave Goldenrod City, although we'll be back eventually because we are going to be able to get a Pokemon here. And let's go back to Route 35 once again. Let's dodge the trainers that I didn't fight last time because they're going to be super duper weak. And let's make our way over here. So we can actually get some new encounters now. I purposefully last episode did not go to the National Park, so this episode would be to catch a new Pokemon right in the beginning. I love when we start things off and we're able to catch Pokemon. And speaking of things that I love, listen to that National Park theme. It is so majestic, but we're about to ruin that with a wild Pokemon. Oh, oh, you're a trainer. Oh, okay. <laughs> my Pokemon is simply Darling. Let me tell you how proud my Darling makes me. Oh, well, your darling better be something special because it stopped my whole monologue right there. We're about to perfectly run into a wild Pokemon. No, it's just a Farfetch'd. We just spent a whole bunch of time a few episodes ago chasing around Farfetch'd in the Ilex Forest, and now you're showing me a Farfetch'd like it's something fancy schmancy. Oh my goodness! We're starting off this episode with a critical hit. I think it's what, like three episodes in a row now? Where the first move, I get a critical hit? I guess that's just something that happens in this randomizer. I get critical hits every single single time right away. All right, nice. 361 XP from your darling Pokemon and a lot of money too. All right. Take my phone number. That's cool. What I'm here for though is encountering a wild Pokemon. Stop talking. Stop talking, lady. You talk too much. All right, let's see. What's our Pokemon encounter going to be? It is a Lucario. That is awesome. It's looking like the aura is with me today. Let's get this Lucario. Oh, this is so, such an awesome encounter, and hopefully we can actually catch this thing. Now, I did go back in between the episodes, I did go back to the Goldenrod department store, and I bought plenty of Pokeballs, so we should theoretically have nothing to worry about. I can't imagine Lucario being as hard to catch as a Latios is. But that Lucario, even at level 10, packs quite a punch. I can't believe we have to use a Super Potion right now to heal up Sokka, otherwise Sokka might die. Now this False Swipe should get it down to 1 HP. Hopefully it's not going for Revenge again. That was a very scary move. Oh yeah, it's doing that again. I honestly think a crit might even kill me at this point. Okay, we're good. All right, Lucario, you had your fun, but let's send out Zahir to absorb some of these hits. Yeah, only three damage from the Revenge. That's much better. Now, let's go for some Pokeballs. See, I have a good inventory once again, filled up with some balls, and I'm gonna go for a Great Ball first. I know the Ultra Ball is obviously better, but I think a blue Great Ball would look better on the Lucario. So we're getting some shakes already. No, it's gonna break out right away. All right, let's go for an Ultra Ball next. I just want something to be easy to catch for once. We've been struggling so, so, so much lately with catching these Pokemon. Oh my gosh. All right, Ultra Ball again. You better not break out of this ball, Lucario. Get in there. Stay in that ball. Come on. Come on. Almost there. We got him. Three balls, and we caught Lucario. Lucario, the aura Pokemon. It said that... It said that no foe can remain invisible to Lucario. It said that no foe can remain invisible to Lucario, since it can detect auras, even foes it could not otherwise see. So I wonder if you had a Lucario back in red and blue, lore-wise, would it be able to battle against the ghosts in Pokemon Tower without using a Sylph Scope? Now, since Lucario always reminds me of a wise Pokemon, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the name Iroh. 
after Uncle Iroh, the Dragon of the West. And we are definitely going to want to bring Iroh on the team at some point, but we might as well keep exploring. Let's see what else we could have found over here in the National Park. You know, the National Park is known for its variety of rare Pokemon, and Piloswine, that would've been kinda cool. Ice and Ground would be fantastic for the team. Rattata? <laughs> Imagine if we got Rattata instead of Lucario. Oh, I'm glad that was not my encounter. Oh, and Azelf was in the grass over here too? Oh, that would've been pretty cool. But knowing my luck, we would not have been able to catch it. So I guess it's good that we didn't encounter this Pokemon. Also, it's weird to me encountering an Azelf in the Gen 4 games without hearing that whole theme. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's nice. We have a little PC right over here. So I could actually grab this thing and put it on the team if I want to. Oh, and it has a status move, Thunder Wave. That's fantastic. So that'll help us catch Pokemon in the future. Ugh, so who do I take off the team? I like everyone, and having two fighting types is too much, but you can't not use a Lucario. So once again, Zaheer, you're gonna get boxed for a little bit, buddy. I feel so bad because I love Zaheer. Zaheer's actually a good Pokemon, and I feel kind of bad putting him away. But when you catch a Lucario, you kind of have to use it. Alright, well, let's get out of- actually, I want to go grab that hidden item. A Meadow Plate. Once again, another item that boosts the power of Grass-type moves. I think I'll keep using my Miracle Seed, though, because that seed makes miracles happen. Hey, look, this guy over here is playing on a DS. Okay, well, we're done with the National Park. That was fun. Definitely enjoyed catching Lucario. Not even mad that I missed a legendary Pokemon, and now we're over to Route 36. Now, you definitely look like a trainer, so let's go ahead and fight you. Let me guess what you're thinking. Oh, one of those psychics. What do you think I'm thinking? I'll give you a little hint, psychic mark. I'm not thinking about anything right now. Ooh, Rotom! And the classic Rotom, too. Not a special form. That's pretty interesting to see. All right, well, let's swap into UA against this thing. I really got to use other Pokemon other than UA. UA's getting too strong, but... Ah! Thunderbolts! I'm kind of glad that I swapped into UA now, because no other Pokemon on my team would be able to take a Thunderbolt as well as UA right now. And let's go for that Night Slash, get that nice one-hit KO. Bye-bye, Rotom. It was good knowing ya. And Pokemon number two, ooh, a little Krabby. I love its little cry. So let's use my stolen Pokemon over here, Kenya. I am never giving this thing back. I love it too much. Oh, what is that? Going for Pluck. Did you know I was going to bring in a Grass type? I don't know, guys. Maybe this guy is actually a Psychic. And why? Why do we always miss with Kenya? Power Whip has 90 accuracy, Seed Flare has 85 accuracy, but they both feel like zero accuracy to me, because I never hit them. Never, ever, ever hit them. But yeah, maybe this guy is actually a Psychic, because he predicted my switch pretty well there. I feel like the trainers in this game are pretty smart, especially compared to the trainers that I was fighting back in uh, Sword and Shield. Some of them were pretty dumb, but these guys, they definitely have some big brain plays. And out comes the Grand Bull. It's actually swapping to Zuko to take care of this thing. I almost wanted to bring Toph in against this thing, thinking it was a... Huh? Ice Punch? Okay, I'm glad I swapped. But yeah, I almost wanted to bring Toph in against this thing, thinking it was a fairy type. It's so interesting, playing the newer generations a whole bunch, getting used to the typings in those games, and then going back to an old game where the fairy type didn't exist. It really changes the matchups against a lot of Pokémon. But there we go, Psychic Mark, he says he was wrong. I don't know, Psychic Mark, it did pretty well there. You did pretty well. And oh, wait a second. I think this is a new route over here. Route 36? Yeah, we didn't catch anything on Route 36. Let's run into the grass over here and catch something else, too. Kind of forgot this grass was here. I was expecting to catch the pseudo Udo. Ooh, a jinx! Throwback to that time I used one in the Let's Go randomizer. Forewarn is a pretty good ability. The only problem I have with using Jinx is I know its defense is just super, super low. It's taking the false swipe pretty well, but in normal situations, this thing has terrible, terrible defense. So if I do use this Jinx in the future, I'm gonna have to be very careful about when I swap this thing in, because I know Jinx can't take hits well at all. But let's see, it can't take hits well, can it get into a Pokeball easy? Let's find out. Go Great Ball, GO! No, it's breaking out. I'm so happy that they let us buy Great Balls and Ultra Balls so early on in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because some of these Pokemon are super hard to catch. Now let's see, if it breaks out of a few more Great Balls, I'll probably switch into Iroh and go for Thunder Wave to just boost the catch rate up a little bit. Oh wow, really? Is Jinx really that hard to catch? Alright, this is it. Final Great Ball. This is the last one I'll go for until we switch into Iroh and go for that Thunder Wave. We're getting our shakes, we're getting some more shakes, can we get... Can we complete the capture? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Iroh, not needed. 
All right, and this Jinx, we're gonna name her... Ty Lee, after the acrobatic girl from Avatar. I almost thought with the way the text looks in this game that that said TV Lee. That would definitely be an interesting name, TV Lee. Oh, another trainer over there, but we're too smart. We got right past you. You know what? We'll battle him for the funsies, even though my team isn't looking too good. And I do want to train up Iroh a little bit, so we'll lead off with Iroh. Hopefully... What? What? Why is this game so glitchy? Why is this game so glitchy? What is going on back there with Sokka? Sokka, you alright, buddy? I'm saving my game here just in case it crashes again. I have never had so many glitchy problems playing a randomizer ever. Well, we're gonna talk to him and we're gonna battle and we're gonna see how this battle goes. Let's see if this battle is super glitchy too. I can properly prepare for any Pokemon adversary. Yeah, by glitching out the game? Let's see how you fight in battle. Alright, well, everything in battle looks normal. School Kid Allen with a Krogunk. Ooh, level 19 Krogunk. That's actually pretty high levels. Uh, if only we had a good moveset for this Krogunky. Well, at least we have Toph. Toph should be able to handle this Krogunk. Let's hope it goes for a Poison-type move, although it likely would go for a Fighting-type move. No, Acid Armor. Wow, I like the way that looks in this game, too. Some of the moves back in Generation 4, even though the hardware was so limited, they look really, really cool. They definitely got very creative with how these moves work. And nice, clean one-hit KO with the Confusion. Now, I'm very curious to see what happens when we get outside of this battle. How glitched out is the game going to be? Or is it going to fix itself? Huh? Was my prediction incorrect? I don't know, let's find out. Nope, complete black screen. Alright, time to reset. Oh, he wants to give me his phone number in the complete darkness. That's not sketchy at all. Okay, well, we're back. Let's hope we don't run into another glitch like that. Ah, hello there. It looks like you're stuck over here. I'm the flower shop's Floria. Listen, listen. When I sprinkled water on that wiggly tree, it jumped right up. It just has to be a Pokemon. If you soaked it... Oh, that's the squirt bottle. Soak the tree for me. I want to see what happens. <gasps> what happens? What happens when you use a squirt bottle on the Pseudo-Wudo tree? There's an odd tree. Use the squirt bottle. Yes, let's go ahead and do it. Poketip used the squirt bottle, and let's see. Ooh, yes, this is gonna be randomized too. Let's see what the pseudo wudo, the dancing little tree, actually is. It is a gabite! Oh, that would have been so cool as my encounter. I'm only slightly disappointed that I actually went into the grass and caught the jinx instead, but it's whatever. <laughs> Imagine that though. People in the Johto region, they try to get to Ecruteak City, they go up to this tree, and then they get terrorized by the dancing Gabite. And we can't even run away from this thing, and oh, its moveset is really good. Dragon Pulse, Dragon Claw, imagine if we could have caught that thing. That would have definitely been a powerhouse. That was fun! I want to give you this for entertaining me. The Berry Pots. Oh, I guess that's how we could grow berries in this game. With the Berry Pots, you can grow any berry from any region with no worries. That's right, I'll give you some berries too. Berries won't do any good without Berry Pots. Ooh, Orin Berries, that's nice. You can restore 10 HP with that. Patch of Berries for the poisoning. You have to plant the berries in the soil. You should water them from time to time. Then they'll grow strong. I have to go back to Goldenrod. Are you heading for Ecruteak? Then you should go north here. See you around. Aw, bye-bye, you were so helpful. Well, I know once we get to Ecruteak, we're gonna be able to encounter another new Pokémon, so I should probably go back to Goldenrod real quick and buy some more balls. Alright, I only have money for four Great Balls, let's make it count. Oh, and one thing I almost totally forgot to do, we might as well just pick this up now, because I'm noticing my running speed is kind of slow, let's go over here and get the bike! <sighs> I opened a branch here, but I can't sell my bicycles. Why is that? Maybe, just maybe, because it's hard to find your shop. You're kind of in one of the worst locations in all of Goldenrod. Could you ride a bicycle and advertise for me? Really? Great! Give me your name and phone number, and I'll loan you a bicycle. Ah, oh, that guy's so nice. In Kanto, they try to sell you a bike for one million dollars. But over here in Johto, he's just like, hey, advertise my bike, and I'll give you one for free. So let's go ahead and register this bad boy. And now let's travel at super speed! Yeah, look at that speed, let's go! All right, now that pseudo wudo Gabite is gone, we can make our way over to the next town and go on another new route. There's so many new routes over here. So let's go and get yet another new Pokemon. What's this one gonna be? Please don't be another thing like Jinx. Oh, Poliwrath, but obviously we can't catch that Poliwrath because of the species clause. We already have Sokka. So let's switch into Kenya just because I don't want to get stuck in this battle and then have it kill me. So let's get out of here and go for another encounter. And let's see, hopefully this will be something different, something we don't already have. It is another Polygrath. All right, that thing's down. Maybe third time will be the charm, or are we going to run into yet another Polygrath? Is Polygrath the only thing on this route? 
No, we have Hitmonlee, another fighting type Pokemon. A lot of representatives for the fighting gang over here. So let's bring out Sokka, let's weaken this thing. Yeah, I didn't want to take a super effective double kick. And this thing also might have the ability Limber, which would prevent it from getting paralyzed altogether. So I think switching out to Sokka here and just going for the false swipe is the best play anyway. This thing hurts a lot though. Again, Sokka, so woo, nice crit. Again, so glad we're using false swipe, otherwise we would have lost that encounter right there. So let's heal up Sokka. Don't want to see our Saki boy die. And Hitmonlee, I'm kind of not in the mood to play games right now, so let's just go for the Ultra Ball. Let's hope we can catch you on the first try, and that would definitely make my day, but no! My guy Hitmonlee over here has to create an uproar and break out of the Pokeball. That truly is an uproar. Let's try the Nest Ball. I know this works better on lower-leveled Pokemon. Maybe it'll do well on Hitmonlee. Let's see. We're getting a shake there. Two shakes. No, it's gonna break out. Final Ultra Ball. It really feels a lot harder to capture Pokemon in Heart Gold and Soul Silver than it does in the newer Pokemon games. See? There you go. Big example right there. Down to the Great Balls. If we're struggling this much catching Hitmonlee and Lucario and even Jinx, we definitely did not stand any chance catching any of the legendaries. But there we go. Got Hitmonlee in the end. It's all good. This amazing Pokemon has an awesome sense of balance. It can kick in succession from any position. Since we're naming Pokemon after Avatar the Last Airbender, I should probably name one of my Pokemon Aang, right? So let's welcome Aang the Hitmonlee. Wow, we really have a big selection of Pokemon at this point. We could swap up the team every episode if we want to. But speaking of swapping up, I think I'm gonna go the other way. I don't really feel like battling that Psychic. I actually want to do this double battle over here. Oh, it looks like there's another double battle up there, I, I think. Just because that'll make it easier to train Iroh, and I think we should be able to handle double battles at this point in the game. Usually in Nuzlocke, I hate double battles, but so far we've been having good luck with them. So let's hope we have good luck here too. Let's battle. All right, I'm bringing out a Pokemon. You're bringing out a Pokemon? Let's see what it is. I don't remember what they used in the base game. Ah, oh, another glitchy trainer. Shaman and Growlithe! Well, you're definitely bringing out a Pokemon, all right. Hello, Shaman. All right, well, if, if we're seeing Growlithe, Iroh's definitely getting out of here. But I can't swap in Sokka to counter the Growlithe, because if Shaman decides to go for the Iroh slot right there, well, Sokka would instantly die. So, Yue, you're coming out over there, and Zuko. Zuko, you're gonna have to go for Fire Fang on the Shaman. Let's see how this turn plays out. This battle is a little bit more complicated now that a Shaman's out on the field, because Shaman's a pretty tough Pokemon. Oh no, that's even worse! Brick Break, a super effective move on UA, but UA's a tank, we got this. Let's see though, Zuko, how much are you gonna do this Shaman? Probably a 3-hit KO, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a 3-hit KO, and wow, both of them were trying to double-team that slot over there. Well, guys, let's make him regret that decision. We're gonna go for Night Slash, and we're gonna go for Fire Fang on the Shaman. Hopefully, that'll be enough to take it out this turn. Oh, UA's health is getting dangerously low. UA normally can tank anything. Never have to worry about UA dying. But in this situation where two Pokemon are ganging up on UA, now it's getting a little scary. All right, goodbye, Shaman. Don't want to see you ever again. Iroh's getting to level 13. That's it. We're only getting 81 experience points. I mean, I know it's split over three Pokemon. And ooh, we're going to see Razor Wind. We're going to see a Razor Wind over here. So we're going to go for the safe rather than sorry principle. And we're going to heal up UA. Oh, that's going to instantly use my Super Potion right there. And let's see. Let's try actually going for Rolling Kick on the Growlithe. Maybe we could get this thing to flinch and completely miss its Razor Wind. Let's see. Nope, it's going to get the Razor Wind off. And wait, does that hit both of my Pokemon? Yes, it does, but it did absolutely nothing. Kind of irrelevant damage. Well, we got the super effective mud shots, and we'll just go for the draining punch. We honestly don't even need a flinch chance. Yeah, Growlithe is done. That was actually a pretty solid double battle. We went up against the mythical Pokemon Shaman right there, and we handled it like a pro. Probably because these guys, their names are so glitchy. Well, we know their names are Tori and Till, but in battle, it's all glitchy and confusing. Now, is this going to be another double battle? I don't know. They look like they're positioned in the double battle, but I know sometimes in these things, they have two trainers right next to each other, and then they challenge you to, like, one-on-one -on -one battles. It's kind of weird. So let's go ahead, let's put an Orin Berry on Zuko, heal him up by exactly 10 HP, and we might as well give an Orin Berry to Iroh. We're probably going to switch out Iroh right away, and let's use our last Orin Berry to heal up Yue, because Yue is likely going to have to come back in again. Let's hope we don't have to use Sokka at all during this battle. All right, let's do it. Is this going to be another double battle? Let's find out. Oh, you are a cute little trainer. Why don't you battle me? Yeah, this is going to be double battle. Okay. All right. Hey, hey there, you young trainer. Why won't you battle with me? Relax, relax. I'll battle both of you at the same time. 
Hey, they have names. Beauty Callie and Beauty... Uh, okay, maybe they don't both have names. Ooh, Ditto and Waylord! Wow, look at that size difference right there. Oh, this is gonna be annoying, though. I want to get rid of that Ditto right away, but the problem is... Let's say the Waylord has a good, powerful water-type move, Zuko might die. So I think what I'll do here is paralyze the Ditto, so whatever it decides to copy is gonna be slower than me. Actually, no, let's just go for it. We're not gonna do anything too fancy, because again, I don't want that Ditto transforming into anything crazy. Let's Drain Punch and Revenge on the Ditto, and let's hope, hope, hope the Waylord doesn't have any crazy powerful Water-type move to knock out Zuko in one hit. Alright, Ditto down, that's good. Zuko's gonna be at full health, but now we have to worry about that Water-type move. Oh, we're getting a level, maybe that'll help us survive. Let's see, though. Ooh, Lava Plume! Good move, although it would be disastrous in double battles right now if I used it and I ended up hitting Iroh. So let's go, let's, uh, let's actually get rid of Rolling Kick. We're not gonna need that move. I actually do kind of like Howl for the attack boost. And now let's see what this Waylord is gonna do. Oh, it's got Octazooka, but it's missing! Oh, we clutched it out really, really well there. That could have been very dangerous. Could have been a disaster. And it looks like the next Pokemon is gonna be a Jigglypuff. Cool, cool. See, I told you guys, Octazooka, that can totally miss. Well, I'm not gonna chance that again. Like they say, you only live twice, and basically Zuko, that was his one life right there. He narrowly dodged death, so we're gonna switch into Kenya so we could take a good Water-type move. Yeah, yeah, that Octazooka was definitely gonna hit, but now, we don't care about that. Actually, we kinda do, because our accuracy fell, and we already missed everything with Kenya. We're gonna have pretty bad luck hitting the rest of our moves, but let's see, Iroh's gonna go for that Revenge on the Jigglypuff. Probably not gonna kill it. Oh, wow! Even with a five-level difference, Iroh, the wise sage Lucario right there, just destroyed that Jigglypuff. Oh, I'm so glad there aren't fairy-type Pokemon in this game. So good. All right, Iroh, I'm actually going to swap you out here. We'll swap in the Toph, and we'll try going for Seed Flare on the Waylord, and we're more than likely going to miss. I'm swapping out in the Toph because, again, I don't want to take a really powerful move from the Waylord and die. Ooh, but we're actually going to hit the Seed Flare? What is this? Our accuracy is lowered, but we're hitting the move. That's unheard of. Kenya, I don't know what got into you, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think you're loving it too, because we're getting to level 24 right here. And now the final Pokemon, ah, oh, a little Poliwag. How cute. Oh my goodness, it has Dive. It has Dive. We are about to obliterate that thing. I was going for Power Whip and Spark. But it said, nope, I'm out of here. And it's gonna hit Toph and do nothing. Oh, that was a critical hit. Yeah, nothing. Kenya, let's whip that Poliwag. Get out of here, Poliwag. You weren't worthy. <laughs> and we beat Beauty Cali and Beauty Question Mark. Wow, you're strong. <gasps> 4,000 Poke Dollars and we're glitched again. I don't know what it is today. Why are we so glitchy? Well, as much as I love the glitches, please stop. I want to play the game normally now. All right, let's go, and we made it to Ecruteak City. Beautiful, beautiful music. So once again, there's a lot of stuff to do here. There's a gym, we could go to the dance theater, there's a nice tower, but before we do any of that stuff, let's go to the Pokemon Center for actually a few reasons. First things first, this guy's gonna come running out of nowhere. Hiya, I'm Bill, and who are you? Hmm, Poketip, huh? You know what? I'm the one that developed a system to transfer Pokemon, but it couldn't have been done by me alone. For example, do you know the Hoenn region? This girl Lynette from Hoenn made the Pokemon storage system easier to use. My friends all over the world are working together to improve the Pokemon trade and storage systems. I have to hurry on back to Goldenrod and see my folks. Bye bye and now that we did that, we could actually go back to Goldenrod ourselves and get a special Pokemon from Bill. So let's heal up, and for what feels like the millionth time this episode, let's go back to Goldenrod City. And also, I figured on the way, I might as well go ahead, ooh, Steel Wing. Bye bye Metal Claw, time to use Lucario's wings, I guess. But I figured I might as well do a little mini trading session to get Iroh up to level 19. Alright, so like I mentioned in the last episode, oh, the bike shop's calling me. Oh, hey, this is the bike shop. I've been selling a lot of bikes lately. It's because you've been riding around on that bike advertising for me. I was wondering how best to thank you, and I thought I'd just give you that bicycle you're riding around. It's yours! Thank you so much. Giving it to me like I was gonna give it back to him anyway. It was my bike after you let me leave the store with it, buddy. But now that we're over here, and we talk to Bill, he'll actually give us a special gift Pokemon, Eevee. So yes, you could definitely count on me to play- Ugh, but I need room in my party? That's so annoying, it should be able to just go to my PC. Alright, well Sokka, I'm gonna put you away for a moment. Can I count on you to play with it? Yes! 
I knew you'd come through. You're the real deal. Way to go. Okay, I'm counting on you. Take good care of it. And it says Poketip received the EV, but when we go ahead and give it a nickname, what is it actually? An Electrode. What kind of avatar name would fit Electrode? Eh, we'll just name it Bolin, after Mako's brother and Korra's friends. Professor Realm said Eevee can evolve into seven different kinds of Pokemon. Well, yeah, but Bolin unfortunately can't evolve at all. So let's see, ooh, it's just a regular Bolin, too. It's not even like the Master Ball variant like we saw at that Voltorb a few episodes back. Maybe if I get time, I'll go into the game and actually change it so it has a cool custom skin. But interesting moveset, Mudshot, Thunder Fang, Thunder Punch, and Hyper Fang. So apparently, Bolin really likes to use its teeth. Well, I do think Bolin would be really fun to use, but it's only level 5 right now, and I just did some training, so I really don't feel like doing more training, but I think maybe next episode, or in between the episodes, I'll trade up Bolin and actually use it, because I do kind of want to use this Pokemon. Wow, we have such a good collection of Pokemon, though. Zaheer, Tai Li, holding the Earth Plate. That's interesting. Good Pokemon all around. We're definitely gonna have fun using some of these guys. Alright, well now that we're back to Ecruteak City, once again, there's a lot of stuff that we can do. I think this episode, I'm actually gonna go take on the Ecruteak Dance Theater. Because we actually need to do this to go ahead and get the HM for Surf. I don't remember what their levels are, I'm hoping we could handle it right now. So let's jump in and try it. Hey, hey! Whoa, what's going on over there? <gasps> Team Rocket! Stop dancing, such a serious dance! Show me something like a hula dance! If you want to see a hula dance, you'd probably want to go to Alola. You mustn't push such a request on me. Huh? Are you telling me you don't respect what the customer wants? Well, then I'll show you how to dance. I'll show you a great one. <laughs> that guy just starts spinning, spinning, spinning. Look at him go. Look at him, he's dancing. I don't even want to interrupt him. You know what? Let's just join him. Let's spin together. Boom, 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 boom. Teach me how to dance, buddy. Huh? Who are you? You dare get in my way? No, I just want to learn how to dance! It's a total misunderstanding! Total misunderstanding! Team Rocket Grunt and ooh, the Pelipper! Level 13! Again, Johto, why are your levels so weird? <laughs> why are your levels so weird? And these levels are boosted too, so I think you would normally have like level 12 Pokemon or something. Ugh, well yeah, this guy should definitely focus on dancing, because his Pokemon battling? Mm-mm-mm, that's not it. Oh no, you make me look like a villain! Oops, I have an important mission. If they find out I was wasting time here, they'll make me start over as the lowest Team Rocket Grunt. I better leave now. You must be Poketip, correct? That was indeed excellent, kind and strong. Good at raising Pokemon as well. That person does know what to look for in people. Ooh hoo hoo, that was me just talking to myself. Never mind. That's it? That's all that's going on here? No, this guy's gonna talk to me. Wonderful! You were so courageous for your age. It was a rare sight to see. I want you to have this. Don't be shy. Take it! Oh, okay, we get the HM this way. I forgot, I was thinking it was like how it was in the original Gold and Silver. I guess we battled the Kimono Girls later on. Well, that's cool. That's a nice move upgrade for Sokka. I think it's about time that we say goodbye to Water Pulse. It was definitely a nice move, but it overstayed its welcome at this point. Well, since that went by a lot quicker than I was expecting, let's do one more thing this episode. We've already done a lot, but we're gonna do more. Let's go over here to the Burned Tower. Ah, I love the music, and look down there, the legendary beasts. We've got Raikou, we've got Entei, and we've got Suicune. Well, I'm blocking Suicune, but there they are. And over here, we've got the gym leader Morty and the mystery man Yusin. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. My name is Yusin. I'm on the trail of a Pokemon named Suicune, and you are... Poketip? Glad to meet you! I heard rumors that Suicune is here, so I came to look. Take a look at the basement through the hole in the floor. There. Suicune is down there. I could go downstairs, but I know it would run away in no time. I know. I have tried it many times. Well, that's kind of depressing. And who's up there? Ooh, my rival's up there. That's another rival battle coming up. Should we do it? Well, actually, we can encounter a wild Pokemon, and there it is. So let's go ahead and encounter whatever the game wants to throw at us. No, we already had you! Don't do that to me! I miss Pentapus! I miss Pentapus a lot! Alright, well, let's see. Give me something different. Something that's not Pentapus. Kecleon! Ooh, that's a weird one! That's pretty hype! I've never used Kecleon, ever! I got it a bunch of times on Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, because you kind of have to encounter one for the story, and I always end up catching it. But I never used that thing, and Crush Claw, that's a pretty good move for Kecleon to have. Alright, let's weaken it. I believe I could go for Assurance over here. That should be fine. Yeah, that's, that's totally cool. 
And we've got the paralysis on it too, so it should be relatively easy to catch. All right, so, ooh, spike cannon. That's a weird move coming from Kecleon. Almost in the red zone, but we are gonna take a powerful spike cannon from this thing. And there we go, one HP, exactly what we're looking for over here. Oh, I'm actually gonna swap out. I saw Crush Claw before, I know that's a pretty powerful move, I don't wanna risk it. Oh, nice, but it's getting fully paralyzed, that's cool. Now, if it can fully paralyze its way into this Great Ball, that would be fantastic. Let's try it. We have not been able to catch any Pokemon easily in a very long time. Let's see if this Kecleon will be the first easy capture we can get. There we go. See the paralysis? That makes a world of difference. Kecleon, the color swap Pokemon. It changes its shading to match its surroundings so it can sneak up on its prey. Only its belly patterns stay fixed. Well, I did a little Googling, because I don't know what to name this thing. And there's a place in Avatar called Chameleon Bay, and a pretty important character that was at Chameleon Bay, so I think I'm gonna name this Kecleon Kiyoshi. And you know what, I've decided, we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna fight our rival YouTube in this episode as well. We've had a big, pretty chilled episode, no crazy battles yet, so we're gonna actually go ahead and do this. But, as much as I'm loving having Iroh on the team right now, I think Iroh is kind of redundant with both the steel and the fighting type, so I'm gonna bring back Zaheer right now, put him in the lead of the party because he has U-turn, and we're gonna go ahead and we're actually gonna do it. Now, is this battle going to be a mess? Probably, because I'm looking it up right now, and he normally has Pokemon that go all the way up to level 22. I know the levels are boosted, and I think his levels are boosted up even more, so we might be underleveled going into this battle. But you know what? Let's do it. Last time we beat him so badly, let's give him a chance to catch up to us. Dot 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 dot! Oh, it's you! You must be here to catch the legendary Pokemon to make yourself look strong. That is only a dream. You see, the legendary Pokemon suits a trainer like me, who is sworn to become the strongest trainer. A battle with Team Rocket Grunts is just right for you. What does that have to do with anything? Really, what does that have to do with anything? A battle with Team Rocket Grunts is just right for me. You know what? For that, for that statement alone, we're gonna go ahead and bop you. And ooh, he's starting things off with a level 22 score rupee. So see, we might be in a little bit of trouble already. But you know what? We're gonna swap out, we're gonna go into Big Chicken, and we have U-Turn here, so we get a little bit of damage while we do the swapping out, even if it's not very effective. Plus, we get to come in to Zuko at full health, which is pretty awesome. So let's hit him with Lava Plume here, and wow, this thing is actually faster than me. It's got Poison Jab. Good, it's not poisoning me. I was worried about it poisoning me right there. That would have been a mess for the rest of the battle, but nice. One Pokemon down, five more to go. Please don't have any big boys. Please don't have any big boys. No Garchomp. No legendaries, just have a bunch of score rupees. Have five more of those and I'll be pretty happy. Okay, Pokemon number two, Taillo. See, this is what I'm talking about. Have more of this type of Pokemon. Anything you have that does not make me regret battling you right now is good. All right, level 22 Taillo. We're gonna bring in Toph and it's gonna go for block. So now Toph can no longer escape. <gasps> not like we were planning on escaping anytime soon, especially if it's going for headbutts. Although watch it get the flinch. Watch it get the flinch. No, good. Toph is immune to flinching. Toph does not care about that flinching at all. Let's spark that thing, shoot it out of the sky, but no, it's living at like one HP, really? Oh, and he's gonna swap. Watch him bring out a ground type Pokemon right now. Geodude, yup. Yup, there it is, level 23 Geodude. We got outplayed. Can we swap out now? Is block only in effect while that Pokemon is out? I think so. Because if it is, I would like to swap out in the Kenya. I know Toph can take out Geodude just fine, but if it's gonna go for a ground type move, which it likely is going to, yeah, Earthquake, we don't want to take that with Toph. We definitely don't want to take an Earthquake with Toph. Kenya, on the other hand, wow. Wow, Kenya. That does a lot more than I thought it would. I was gonna say Kenya on the other hand, Kenya can take it, but nice, we are hitting the Seed Flare on the first try! I was coming in here prepared to miss like two or three Seed Flares and have a little bit of a struggle, but no! No, we're doing really well so far! Okay, three Pokemon down, three to go, Charmander! I think my dream is coming true right now, guys! I think YouTube's team is full of baby Pokemon right now, so cute! This guy talks about such powerful Pokemon- SACRED FIRE CHARMANDER! Sacred Fire, that's ho -Oh's move right there. And of course, it's gonna get the big bad burn on us. Sokka, I know this is gonna be tough. I know this is gonna be really tough because we have to deal with a Pokemon that's doing a lot of damage to us even with a resisted move. No, we're not gonna be able to take it out. And now we have to deal with Heat Wave too. Oh my goodness, look at all these powerful fire moves. Oh no, 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 Sokka! Ugh. 
Sacred Fire. It's the Sacred Fire that did us in. If we didn't get burned there, we would have been able to beat that. That's crazy! Losing a Water-type Pokémon to a Fire-type Charmander, too! Well, to be fair, that Charmander had some pretty powerful Fire-type attacks. So we're gonna go ahead... We're gonna switch into Yue, who's our second fastest Pokémon. We really want to outspeed that Charmander. I'm just gonna go for Night Slash. I think that should finish it, but no. Ooh, it's missing the Sacred Fire! That's good! That's good! We don't want another Pokémon burned. And we're gonna take out that Charmander. Wow, that's rough. Sokka's going down. I really wanted to get a Water Stone too, and see if we could eventually evolve that thing, and see what it would evolve into. Sokka, you're definitely going to be missed. Well, I'm gonna attack this thing a little bit with Yue. I don't want to swap out just yet. I want to see how much we can do to this thing. Nice! Wait, what is that move? That's Snatch, right? No, that's, uh, that's, uh, Skull Bash. That's Skull Bash. So we're gonna take a pretty powerful normal type attack right now, unless we can finish it off with the Night Slash. I know if we get Night Slash, if we get that critical hit, it ignores the defense boost, so we might be able to take it out. No, it's just gonna live. And how much is this Skull Bash gonna do from the Munchlax? 12 damage, really? I thought it had more fight in it than that. All right, turns out we didn't need Zuko for this after all. And now YouTube, Two more Pokemon left. I forgot he swapped out of that Taillow when it's at like 1 HP. Again, no point in switching. Let's just go ahead and hit it with the Night Slash. We're gonna take a Headbutt. Not flinching. No flinch today. We are not in the flinch zone and that Taillow is gonna go down. And now YouTube's final Pokemon, a Kangaskhan. All right, at least YouTube has one big boy on the team. Out of desperation, weak people sometimes do okay at fighting back. Alright, Kangaskhan's gotta outspeed me, so I'm going for Payback. It's gonna go for Facade. Nice, strong, stab, normal type move there. But I think Payback is gonna do a lot of damage to this thing. So much so that we don't even need to switch into fighting type Pokemon. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe I was wrong there. Alright, in that case, since we're not killing this thing anytime soon, let's actually go for the Mud Shot to slow it down a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna take some damage, but we are gonna slow it down here, which is important, because I do want to swap out. Zuko, as much as I love Zuko and I think Zuko would be able to handle it, I don't think Zuko would do well coming into a facade. So we're actually gonna go ahead, we're gonna swap in Toph, since Toph resists the facade. Alright, let's do it. Let's take this facade. Let's laugh it off like it does no damage to us. Yep, that's good. And let's start going for Magnet Bomb. Wow, even with its speed lowered, it's still faster than us. That I was not expecting. Well, let's hope Magnet Bomb does a decent amount of damage to this thing. Eh, could have done more. Don't you get that I'm going easy on you? Yeah, YouTube, I know. I would say that too if I was losing this badly. Uh, let's try Confusion here. Wait, why is it slower than me now? What's it going for here? Wow, that does nothing. Oh, Facade. Alright, so do we have a speed tie? I think we might have a- <gasps> Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Time to heal! Even though I think a Magnet Bomb could kill it here, time to heal. Toph, you're always scaring me getting down to such low HP. Ooh, try attack. Well, let's hope this doesn't burn me. Also, a freeze would kind of suck too. Let's hope we don't get any status conditions from this move. No, it's getting the burn. Come on. That's like the one most annoying as possible status condition we could get right here, because now this isn't going to kill. And now we're taking burn damage, and this guy better not have a potion. He better not have a potion. Let's just knock you out with confusion. There we go. Kangaskhan down. All right, so overall pretty easy battle, except that Kangaskhan was kind of rough. Kind of rough. I'm shocked that Sokka died. Sokka should not have died there. Aw, oh, whatever. You would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. And out he goes. It gets me wondering, why was he just waiting there? Why wasn't he down there with the legendary Pokemon that he so desperately wanted to catch? Well, Sokka, my Poliwhirl has been with me forever. Ugh, time to get some good rest, buddy. I don't know how you died there. I really don't know how you died there. If it wasn't for that Sacred Fire, we would have been totally fine. If it did two heat waves, we would have been good. If it missed with Sacred Fire, we would have been good. But my friend Sokka, rest in peace. But real quick, let's go all super hack cheater and hack in a Water Stone just so we could see what Sokka would have evolved into, because I really wanted to know. We weren't able to find a Water Stone normally, but let's see what its randomized evolution was going to be. <gasps> Oh no! No, that would have been so cool! Sokka would have evolved into a Feraligator! I feel like that would have been a perfect name too. Sokka would have totally fit a Feraligator. That's rough, buddy. That's rough.
And with that, my friends, I think we're gonna end today's episode of the Pokemon Heart Gold Extreme Randomizer Nuzlocke. I can't believe we actually managed to catch a lot of Pokemon today, including a Lucario. And next time, we're gonna be jumping right into the heat of things. We're gonna finish up the Burn Tower events, activate those roaming legendary Pokemon, and I'm really interested to see what those are randomized into. It's gonna be pretty crazy, because they'll be at level 40 and running around everywhere. So my friends, thanks for watching this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Do it for Sokka so his death wasn't in vain. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.